Happy Friday, first Friday of the year for you guys. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about what you did for Christmas. Did you forget to get people some gifts? Huh? Did you? I'm sure you did because today's video sponsor is a great opportunity for you to say you're sorry with dope metal prints from Displate. These things mount with magnets. It's so easy to put them up. You could remember that we previously had different displays behind me on the wall and all I had to do was take them down and then flop the new ones on with magnets and there we go. We have a brand new looking set with Advent Children and a gun blade behind my head. It's amazing. You can check them out at the link in the video description, displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Enter coupon code UFD to save 15%. And with that said, stop being a terrible gift giver, give it on time, but you know, make it up with the display. And let's go ahead and talk about the on time nature of NVIDIA, who, if you remember in yesterday's hot news, we were discussing because AMD seems poised to launch their Navi 21 GPU sometime in the next couple of months. Hopefully, that's the, the going rumor right now. And with its transition to the seven nanometer plus lithography, as well as the fact that they're gonna incorporate a larger die size, it looks poised to take on the RTX 2080 Ti. This was coupled with the rumor of an RTX 2080 Ti Super, which would then directly compete with that new RX 5900 XT or whatever it may be called. Well, now there's the day after, there's information, rumors, leaks, whatever you want to call it, about the upcoming Ampere architecture that NVIDIA is supposed to be launching, which is going to be NVIDIA's first attempt at making a 7 nanometer GPU, and it looks like it's just going to crush AMD again and put them back in the Stone Ages, which is what makes sense. In yesterday's video, we talked about how AMD was finally catching up, but also, like, NVIDIA hasn't launched a new architecture in a year and a half. So they're ready to kind of, you know, take back the throne as soon as AMD pulls it from them. So the, the leak that's out there right now is that the seven nanometer Ampere architecture will reportedly boost performance by 50% and also half the power consumption, which is a weird thing. It's probably only going to do one or the other depending on the card that you're doing. Usually with process refinement going from, let's say 12 nanometers to seven nanometers, you will see power consumption decrease if you remain at the same performance level. You don't get reduced power consumption if you increase the performance by 50%. But if we take this to be the RTX 3080 series or whatever Nvidia is gonna call it, it's gonna put a lot of things to shame. 4K 120 hertz gaming might be possible on a single card with a 50% performance increase. However, just like Nvidia did with the RTX 2080 in this slide, as you can see here, saying that it's two times the RTX 1080, um, that was only with DLSS turned using the new tensor cores that the 2080 had, but the 1080 never did. So it's not actually twice the performance in real games. There's some speculation going around saying that that 50% boost might be in fully ray traced environments where it's taking advantage of the RT cores and the tensor cores. And so we would see a 50% boost in frame rates in games like Quake 2, ray traced or Minecraft ray tracing or control, not necessarily in traditional game environments where we might see more like a 20 to 30% bump, which is typical for Nvidia's architecture increases. Obviously, we're nowhere near the launch for this as of yet. The report that came out of the Taipei Times seems to indicate that this would come out in the later half of 2020. So probably more like when the RTX 20 series was launched, which was in August of 2018. So expecting this more towards the holiday season would make a lot of sense. And um, if they can just hold AMD off with something as simple as an RTX 2080 Ti Super, it, they have no rush to actually release the seven nanometer GPUs. And then finally, once they release a seven nanometer plus GPU, like Nvidia just really seems to have the GPU department in the bag, even if an RX 5900 XT can compete with the current top dog RTX 2080 Ti. As much as I want AMD to bring a competitive GPU, it seems like they only do that at the tail end of what Nvidia is doing. So it's a little frustrating. Hopefully it's not that bad and, and AMD is even better than what we thought. Is that possible? My hype jimmies are rustled. But speaking of a GPU we know we're definitively getting from AMD, there has been a new picture of the Phantom Gaming 5600 XT from ASRock. It is pictured, it's supposed to be launched at Computex in just a 
couple of days. The pricing that we talked about in yesterday's hot news is not great. It looks like it's gonna be coming in at $300, which is just a little too expensive. But speaking of expense, it looks like graphics cards might get more expensive in 2020, according to people who monitor DRAM prices, saying that we should expect GDDR6 to go up around five to 6% in the next couple of quarters, which would mean that the pricing of GPUs would also go up, or potentially the launch pricing of GPUs that we're gonna see will be higher than anticipated. It might be one of the reasons why AMD might price the 5600 XT at $300, because they're into anticipating that they're gonna have to eat cost on the VRAM, and even though the 5700 is really close in price to that, they're gonna make it so that uh, the 5700 is gonna go up in price as well just because of the DRAM manufacturing. So expensive GPUs, looks like it's on their way, and there might be another market factor that could play into more expensive GPUs, and it's the fact that TSMC is apparently producing five nanometer ASICs for Bitmain, which would increase their ability to mine Bitcoin. And yes, mining Bitcoin is not directly related to GPU pricing, but typically if mining Bitcoin becomes popular again, the price of Bitcoin could rise, the price of altcoins that are mined by GPUs could rise as well and make GPU mining more profitable again and allow us to enter into 2020, the year of GPU drought mark two. This is the future that you get, my friends. The only good news here is that this five nanometer delivery appears to be the chip's tape out and not the actual volume production, which could take another six or so months. So it's not quite happening right now, but the, the, the wheels are getting spinning on that. Speaking of things getting more expensive, it also looks like NAND flash prices might increase. So in case you've been eyeing an SSD that you've wanted for a while, you might want to look to pick it up right now. Because according to a report at DigiTimes, we might see a 40% increase in 2020. It's quite significantly worse than the 5% uh, increase that we're expecting in GPU prices. But NAND flash, GPU pricing all going up. When are we gonna start hearing that regular RAM pricing is gonna go up as well? Are we back at the end of 2017 and early 2018 again? Uh, I guess UFD Tech's gonna have to make mining videos again. Well, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some Intel stuff, which appears that uh, certain companies are leaking their next generation of boards. Biostar has teased what is a new Intel motherboard. Most people are expecting that this is the Z490 because this would be a terrible time to launch Z390 over a year after it launched, and then also with the next generation of Comet Lake CPUs being so close. So this Biostar promotional image seems to be something that's indicating the Z490, but on top of that, the the entire 400 series motherboard lineup for Asus has been leaked, not in just including the Z490 chipsets, but also the W480, the H470, and B460. So in case you want to peep the scene on that, the link's in the video description, but it looks like there's gonna be 29 motherboards in the 400 series chipset for Asus. And then Intel apparently is riding on into town to save quantum computing with their new Horse Ridge cryogenic control chip, which allows multiple qubits to be connected. I'm not quite sure on the fundamentals of quantum computing, but I know qubits are really important. The cryogenic Horse Ridge con connects them together, just like Old Town Road connected all of the world for a few days. And then AMD is really connected to TSMC with the indication seeming that AMD is going to be TSMC's largest customer for seven nanometers in the second half of 2020. There are several reasons for this. One, AMD is moving into seven nanometer GPUs more heavily. They have Zen 2 performing quite admirably. They'll have Zen 3, as well as the fact that Apple is looking to transition to five nanometers towards the end of this year. So they're actually gonna relinquish some of that seven nanometer uh, bandwidth that they've been hogging. So AMD is gonna overtake Apple in that regard. But AMD is also overtaking its records with stock pricing, now it's hitting its highest intraday record as well as its highest closing price with it coming in at over $47 at the time of filming. AMD stock price going up, as you can see here, uh, 2015 being its lowest point, And then obviously with the introduction of Ryzen, Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000, and with the fact that it looks like their future is continuing to be bright with Zen 3, there's a whole lot of good indication that they're gonna be okay. I don't think this is really based on their GPU performance, but with Epic and Ryzen performing so well. The AMD seems to be like a good money maker. 
but so does Apple. Talking about AMD and Apple together, again, Apple hits $300 on its stock price, which means that it is now worth $1.33 trillion. Tim Cook taking the company to record high levels. A lot of people thought Apple would fall apart after Steve Jobs. While a lot of people might advocate that Apple is no longer the innovator that they once were, they sure are the people who are making the most money, my friends, or worth the most money. That's a lot of cash. Then let's talk about another phone company. OnePlus is teasing a concept design that they're gonna be unveiling at CES known as the Concept One. The Concept One is going to introduce what they're calling invisible camera and color shifting glass technology, which just means that when you apply an electronic signal to it, it actually makes it clear so that you don't have cameras on the back. Apparently Wired has been able to check this out and they called it a little anticlimactic, which, yeah, I guess. It's cool. It's not a bendable phone. Thanks, OnePlus. But something that is cool is what Aston Martin apparently is going to be showing off at CES, which is a tri-view rear view mirror using cameras that are in the side view mirrors to actually put it up on the display of the rear view, which allows you to get a full uh, blind spot coverage view of the rear of your car. This is something that is really needed in a lot of cars, especially something that I think Tesla is gonna be one of the first to implement as soon as it becomes legal to not have side view mirrors because it just increases wind resistance on the car so much, reduces its aerodynamic flow and makes it so that it's less efficient. Getting rid of the side view mirrors and just having cameras that you can see at all times should be the way of the future. What happens if your cameras go out? Turn your head. I solved life for you. And then a company that you never expected to hear in the auto scene is BlackBerry because they are apparently making an electric superbike with the company Damon. And this is not the BlackBerry who makes the Android phones. This is a BlackBerry spinoff from the original Research in Motion company that is giving the operating system to the Hypersport Pro electric superbike using the QNX operating system. A BlackBerry motorcycle, vroom vroom. Except for it doesn't make noise when it starts up just so you know. But I'm making some noise about the Final Fantasy VII Remake because it appears that in the PS4 demo, there is apparently some PC code that is showing up in there. P the Final Fantasy VII Remake has been announced as a timed exclusive for the PlayStation 4, but there's some indication that there are references to AMD, which makes sense for PS4 and potentially Xbox, but then there's also a reference to Nvidia, which could either mean that it's coming to Switch or PC, or it could just be some code that's in there to help them run it when they're building it on a computer. Either way, we'll see. Another welcome addition on top of the Final Fantasy VII Remake coming to PC is Google tweaked the Stadia controller to be slightly better. One of my biggest gripes with the original Stadia controller as far as its design was that the rear trigger buttons kind of suck. They're very mushy, they, there's like no tactile feedback, it just kind of feels like junk. Well, uh, apparently the ones that are currently being produced actually showcase a little bit more resistance with an audible click that is coming with the controller. So in case you want a new one, buy a new one and it'll have the little clicky click. And it also apparently goes flush as opposed to the Founders Edition controllers like I have, which has a little gap as you can see in the image here on the left. And that's where I'm gonna left this episode of Hot News. Sorry, I had to connect it. I'm gonna leave you now because it's the end of hot news. Don't forget to check out disc plates to get dope metal prints. They plant a tree every time you buy one. So uh, you're helping the environment as well, as opposed, as well as getting amazing decor that is super easy to put on the wall and take down, mind you. So check that out at the link in the video description. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. And I'll see you in the next video, which should be coming out tomorrow. And then hot news should resume on Monday. Cheers.